solve this problem is, well, we should always try and combine stuff as much as possible. We can't combine these because we have e to the positive x and we have e to the negative x. Not anything that we can do there because their exponents are different. Um, <clears throat> I mean, what, what do y'all think we could do to this equation? What, what is one thing that we can't do right now? We're trying to solve for x. Is there anything that we can move, change? Something. Yeah, we can get rid of that too. We can multiply both sides by two. See what that gets us. Okay, multiply both sides by two. So we get e to the x minus e to the negative x is equal to ten. Hmm. Still kind of stuck right here. <clears throat> It would be if that negative wasn't in the exponent. If the negative was in front, yes. But the negative's in the exponent, so we can't really do anything with that. <coughs> Technically, there is a way to factor this. Okay? There is a way to factor this. Um, we're not going to go through it. So, what did I say just a minute ago? When we can't factor, when we don't really have any other way to solve it algebraically, what can we always rely on? We can always graph it. We can always graph it. Now, you have two choices. You can graph e to the x minus e to the negative x in y1, and you can graph 10 in y2 and look for where those intersect because you want to know where the equal. Or typically, anytime I graph it, I always set it equal to 0. So I'm going to move the 10 over e to the x minus e to the negative x minus 10. I'm going to move the 10 over, and then I'm going to graph it, and I'm going to look for where it crosses the x-axis. So my e is second natural log x, close the parentheses, minus e to the negative x, close the parentheses, minus 10. <coughs> graph it. Look for where it crosses the x-axis. I see one place where it crosses the x-axis. If you're afraid that there are more than one, you can always zoom out, change your window, but I'm pretty sure that's the only place. So second trace, zero. Okay, left bound, it wants your cursor on the left side of where it crosses the x-axis. So get as close as you can, press enter. That's a negative value, so my right bound has to have a positive y value. Press enter. Yeah, press enter again. Bound is our zero. 2.312. Okay. Uh, now, chances are your answer choices may be in terms of E or something like that. So then what do you do? If you got your calculator, just plug in the answer choices and see which ones give you that decimal. Okay. Pretty, pretty simple solution there. Okay. Now technically, you didn't even have to multiply by 2 in order to get it. Okay. If you didn't really know how to solve this, you can always solve by graphing. Uh, so you could have graph the left side, graph the right side, but that would get intersect. It would give you the same answer. It will give you the same answer. Now, B, we are going to factor that. We are going to factor that because we can. Okay? Um, <clears throat> it's not that difficult. It's kind of like the uh, trig functions that we had that were quadratics. We're going to approach it kind of the same way. Okay? We have 3e e to the 2x minus 7e e to the x minus 6 is equal to zero. Okay, so we are set up prime for factory at this point. It's equal to zero. We have e squared. And that's as simple as that is. e to the 2x is the same as e to the x squared. And we have e to the x. I'm going to approach this the same way I did with the trig. Remember with the trig, we came over here to this side and we said, you know what, let's let that trig function, that sine or cosine, Let's replace it with a different variable. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to say, well, let me replace that e to the x with a different variable, just so it's a little bit easier for me to look at the 
this past grade. Okay. <clears throat> so what we have is we have 3m squared. Okay, because, let me show you over here to the side, e to the 2x, we can rewrite that um, kind of going backwards with our properties of exponents. We can write that as e to the x squared. Because remember when you have a power raised to a power, what do you do with those powers? You multiply. So x times 2 is 2x. Two okay, so you see how e to the 2x is e to the x squared. <coughs> Okay, now we can factor. 3m times m is going to give us 3m squared. What factors of 6? 3 and 2 come to my mind. How do you think we should put them in there? Do you think we should do 3 and 2 or do you think we should do 2 and 3? 2 and 3. Because... And let's see here, one of them's negative, one of them's positive. I'll figure that out here in a second. The outside gives me 9. The inside gives me 2. I have to get a result of negative 7. So which one needs to be negative, 9 or 2? 9 needs to be negative, so that means the negative goes there, the positive goes here. <clears throat> so now, remember when we got to this point... We plugged the original function back in there, so that's 3e e to the x plus 2 is equal to 0, and e to the x minus 3 is equal to 0. Okay, We've got to isolate the e's, so minus 2, 3e e to the x is equal to negative 2, divide by 3, e to the x is equal to negative 2 thirds. I don't want to know what e to the x is. I want to know what e is. I cannot write negative 2 thirds so that it has a base of e. Okay, it just it ain't going to happen. So, um, <clears throat> to approach this, I need to write it in logarithmic form. So, uh, to write this in logarithmic form, that's the natural log of negative two-thirds is equal to x. Remember, when you're writing in logarithmic form, uh, the exponent and what it's equal to switch places. Well, what did we just talk about a minute ago? Can we do that? Can we take the natural log of a negative number? No, we can't take the natural log of a negative number. So that solution doesn't do us any good. Let's go to the other one e to the x minus 3 is equal to 0. Uh, is equal to zero. Add the 3, write it in logarithmic form that says the natural log of 3 is equal to x. I think that one should work, but I'm going to check it just to make sure. i got to be careful. Uh, just to make it easier here when I'm checking this, I'm going to go ahead and calculate the natural log of 3. And when I'm plugging it in, I'm going to use my answer button to help me out. So 3e to the 2 times x, well, x is the natural log of 3, so I'm going to put the answer in its place, minus 7 times 7e to the x, well, x is the natural log of 3, which is the last answer, minus 6. Okay, now, this is a pitfall of your calculator. It gives me negative 1 e to the negative 12. Okay, now this e is different than the e we've been using. Notice this is the capital E. Okay, this is the calculator's way of expressing scientific notation. So the, the calculator is saying this is 1 times 10 to the negative 12. Well, what do you do in scientific notation if there's a negative exponent? Which way do you move the decimal, left or right? Move it left. Negative 1 e, uh, times 10 to the negative 12. That means we move the decimal place 12 places to the left. So we're going to put 11 zeros in front of negative 1. It's going to be point zero 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 one. Yeah, that that's zero. Okay, that's.
at zero. It, like I said, it's just, it's a pitfall of your calculator um, as far as approximations. Uh, now, if I had typed the natural log of three in here, it may have given me zero. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not going to go through that. But the natural log of three here is the answer. Okay. If you don't believe it, you could you could graph it. Okay. Again. If you look at that and you say, I know I'm supposed to factor, but I'm not quite sure how I'm supposed to factor it, um, you can graph it and look for where it crosses the x-axis. Bless you. Um, just know it's not, it's going to give you a decimal answer. Okay, and your answers, bless you, your answer choices um, are going to be... <clears throat> in terms of the natural log, okay, there we can see the answer. Uh, it looks like it crosses at negative 1. I don't think that it is exactly negative 1 here. It's kind of a weird looking function. There's my 0, okay, I don't look there, there's that negative 1 e to the negative 12 again, okay, even though it is a 0. 1.098, was that the value of the natural log of 3? Let me pay attention. 1.098, okay, that is the answer. Okay, so I wanted to show you how you do it algebraically, but worst case scenario, you can always graph it, okay? You can always graph any equation to solve it. You're just looking for, set equal to 0, looking for where it crosses the x-axis.